Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are, Blue Marble Riders. I hope you're having a great day. A lot better than two motorcyclists I just heard about in the last week anyway. This vlog is going to be about left turners and Royal Enfields. The two are not related. But first, left turners. Last week, I met a guy in the gym and I say met, we nodded as motorcyclists do in a world of cages. We didn't actually pass any words. I'm going in to the gym to do my workout. He's coming out. He's a little older than me, maybe mid 60s. Uh, crew cut, dark bomb black helmet, uh, older uh, dark jacket. But I had noticed when I parked the uh, Goodsey that he was riding a dark sports model Yamaha, a fairly modern one, uh, sort of a grey, a carbon grey one. I'm not sure that the colour and the details of that has anything to do with the story, but anyway, it wasn't uh, the next morning that my wife drew my attention to an article in the local Facebook listing that a older man in his 60s on a new model Yamaha had been hit and killed by a left turner just in fact a hundred meters away from my gym at five o'clock in the morning at five o'clock in the morning round here it's uh, it's absolutely light it, in fact the sun's up around 4 15 right now he uh, he was driving along the highway and an F-350 truck in a left turn lane pulled out in front of him. He had nowhere to go apparently, he hit the truck square on at, if he was doing the speed limit, about 80 kilometers an hour, 50 miles an hour. If you look at the side of the truck, he did a fair bit of damage on the truck. So he was either asleep, I doubt it, or it happened so suddenly he didn't have any warning because uh, it didn't look like a soft hit. He died on the way to the hospital, I believe. The truck driver, feel sorry for the guy, he stayed there, drugs and alcohol were, not, were ruled out. Uh, it's just one of those things, uh, I suppose, where someone says I just didn't see him. And I'm not going to go into the black jacket as I'm wearing right now, or the black bike that I'm drive riding right now. I've got a multicolored helmet, I'm not going to go into all of the high-vis stuff that you should probably be doing, but I don't, because that would be hypocritical of me. I do some days, I don't others. I ride the same road. I turn uh, at that left turn lane that, that truck turns every day. I find it hard to believe that he couldn't see anything, and I'm, I'm not even going to cast aspersions because whoever it is is probably going through a hard enough time anyway, but I certainly hope cell phones weren't involved, although I have not heard any th such thing. The other thing that caught my attention last week about left turners was Treat Williams, the American actor. He was also wiped out by a left turner on his, I think it was a Virago 1700, an older model bike. Uh, wow, that's two in one week. And most things on the road, you have a semblance of control. But when it comes to left turners, you are really completely gambling. You are gambling on them seeing you and them not turning in front of you at the last moment. And I'm no specialist, although I'm, I've been riding for a long time now, 40 years, and I have survived. I've had my fair share of scrapes, most of them self-induced, if the truth be told. But one thing I'm always very leery of is left turners. And I'm just going to pass on some things I do, and I'm, as I said, no professional, and I'm sure people will chime in below with much, much better and safer ways of doing things than I do. But what I do with a left turner is if someone is going to turn in front of me, left turn, I slow right down, regardless, I slow down. I don't care who's behind me, I slow down. The second thing I do, I don't try to see through the windshield because it's practically impossible to do that and see into their eyes and know what they're thinking, as some uh, guides tell you to do. What I do is I look at their hands on the steering wheel, if I can see them, and are they moving that steering wheel round to the left. The second thing and uh, that I really focus on is that left side front wheel. Is it still rotating and is it turning to the left? If it is, I assume the worst. I always assume the worst. This guy's going for it. I don't care if they're rolling at one mile an hour 
and it's highly likely they're just not quite stopping. I don't care. I lay on the horn. And I have, thanks to Lyle, a, a subscriber you may have heard of before, I have a good loud horn on this bike and I lay on it. I don't feel embarrassed and I'm not trying to make them angry. I don't feel any uh, anger towards them. I literally just want to get their attention. Now they're the things I do. I also position myself in the road. If they're turning, I will often waggle in front of them. So I'll, if I'm, I'm usually riding along here, but if they're turning, I'll usually shoot on over to one side. And that glinting of the headlight can sometimes catch their attention too, or at least I think it might do. Anyway, they're the things I do. High vis obviously is really good. Uh, this guy wasn't wearing that. Whether that had any factor on the, on the crash or it was the lack of attention by the truck driver, I don't know. But uh, anyway, that's the first part of this. The meat and potatoes is out of the way. The sad part is out of the way, folks. I'll, I'll move on now to uh, something a little more fun. So last weekend, if you've read the title below, you'll notice that I met up with a couple of guys at a Royal Enfield test ride and uh, this Royal Enfield test ride was organized by a local Royal Enfield dealer and a, a bunch of bikes are shipped there I, th I think they've been all around the States they had Wisconsin plates on them and they'll go all through Canada as well and we got to choose and ride some of these bikes Doug at uh, mile zero Suzuki invited me down with a bunch of other people I'm assuming but he actually I went in there the week before and he told me about it asked me to come on down so so I did now I've ridden some Royal Enfields before, as you know, I've got a couple of reviews, I'll put the links up to them here. So I thought I'd ride at least one that I hadn't ridden before. So I plumped for the 350, wait for it, Meteor. I know, so unlike me, I've never had, well I've had a cruiser very briefly and I decided they weren't for me and got the heck out of there. But uh, I decided to give it another shot, because I'm, I'm an open mind sort of individual. Decided to give it another shot, and I noticed it was very unpopular. I went out on it. Uh, Andy, my friend, he got on the Inter 650 and Lyle, who was also with us, got on the Hunter 350 with the same single cylinder engine that is in the Meteor 350. Had a ride of the Meteor 350. Loved the engine. Uh, but I've got to say, cruisers just aren't for me and it's nothing Royal Enfield did. It's just that, that seating position just doesn't work well for me. I just The feet forward thing is totally alien. I dare say you'd get used to it. I dare say many have. Okay guys, so I, uh, I just took that out. I've never ridden a cruiser before, apart from one old one I had. And I uh, loved the engine, but uh, not a big fan of the feet pegged forward sort of thing. Uh, call it my personal preference, but nothing personal folks. If you love them, you love them and that's okay, I get it. There are things I love that you don't love and I'm not offended by that. So, went around on this thing. It only had five gears. It weighs about a hundred and... 95 kilograms I believe and I'd have to say I felt for what I, I of course I got down there on 1100 Griso 12 sorry 1200 Griso uh, so it felt a little underwhelming uh, but very easy going in the in the Royal Enfield way a very lovely bike thoroughly enjoyed it I was riding next to Andy who uh, who managed to turn off his indicator a few times even though they're not self cancelling well done Andy and Lyle was on his 350 Hunter. I think out of all of us, uh, well, both Lyle and Andy really loved the bikes they were on. The uh, Inter 650, Andy loved that, really enjoyed it. And uh, Lyle loved the 350. We didn't film it. I've got some film shots I'll show you in a minute just of the whole meet up there. I probably might be playing them right now, who knows. But Lyle thought that the 350 Hunter was a gem of a bike, a very nice bike. You know, it's uh, someone said to him, well, you couldn't really take it down the highway. And he quite rightly said, well, no, it's not really meant for that. This is a, this is a back lane, I wouldn't say blaster, but entertaining, flickable bike. And he thoroughly enjoyed it. And I've got to say, I did say I loved the engine on the 350 Meteor. A single cylinder, it was unbelievably smooth. With character, but smooth. Uh, I could rev it up and down all over the place and it was a lovely bike. I really, really enjoyed it. After that, I went out on the Inter 650. Unfortunately, Lyle had to leave, but Andy took uh, the Conti GT out. 
and we both really enjoyed those rides as I have done before especially the uh, the, the Conti Andy Andy th fell in love with that thing he really really enjoyed it and this is one experienced motorcyclist uh, a trumpet boy all sorts of uh, triumphs and beamers he's had he thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed that bike and I think it's getting in under, under his skin actually I don't want to say he's actually going to get one but uh, you never know he might actually get one you never know hey Andy my Inter 650 was good. I'm not sure if it was the example because I've ridden them before and my previous one had none of these issues. But this one, um, it had relatively low KMs, but it was a demo bike and the throttle was very loose. They hadn't, uh, the, I guess, I can't blame the guys trucking these things around uh, North America, but as, as an advert for your brand, if I were them, I'd probably be snugging up things like levers and throttle play to within you know standard mine had an incredible amount of throttle play on it which doesn't give you a good feel for the bike and doesn't give you a good feel about quality i know they're a quality bike because i've ridden them before the other th thing i noticed about this one and it didn't happen on the last one and i'd be eager to see if any other inter 650 uh owners or conti 650 owners noticed it i know andy didn't he didn't mention it to me is mine changing from fifth to sixth uh, I got a few false neutrals in there and I never had that on the first one and whether this is because it's kind of been abused maybe it was just me can't say it was definitely not the easiest bike to shift accurately from fifth to sixth other than that really enjoyed it and he looked really good on the Conti I'll flash a few pictures now what a lovely looking bike that is and I'd like to thank uh, Doug and Mile Zero for hosting that, putting it on. I know it does them some good too. They're the new Central Vancouver Island Royal Enfield dealer after the Parksville one shut down. And nicer guys you couldn't have. I take all my bikes there. And with that said, keep the shiny side up, the rubber side down. And wherever you are, have a great, great riding experience the next time you're out. This is the Blue Marble Rider. Out. Once again, Thanks for watching everyone. If this is the first time you've watched, please consider subscribing. I do motorcycle reviews, motorcycle related product reviews, off-road and on-road vlogs as well as tours. Even though I'm not the most diligent poster, don't forget to follow me on social media. That's Instagram, Facebook and Twitter. And to like, and especially, I'm begging you here folks, subscribe. And don't forget to click the bell so that you're notified whenever I release a video. This is the Blue Marble Rider, out.